All right, it's time to see if we can't figure out what's going on out at Starbase. It's a Starbase summary, October 31st through November 2nd. I'm John. Let's have a look. Starting off with a peek inside the Star Factory with the big, not floor to ceiling really because the ceiling's so tall, windows that they've put on the front of it, but some possible shielding viewed through there. Another interesting in bit of information here is that we've done a flyover. Jack got up in the plane and did a flyover over Starbase to see what we could spot, like the Star Factory. There you go. You can actually see the office building on the right-hand side, the connector between the two that has the differently colored roof, and then the huge Star Factory. I mean, it's the big part. That's the Sanchez side on the back side. You can see the production bays, the Star Factory on the left. You've got the high bays and the mega bays. Then you've got the rocket garden there where the rocket shadows are sort of stretching across the flats there. And then the assembly yard. Here's a little bit of a close-up on that where you can see zoopity zoo. Information about that pad B OLM construction. It's the square there in the middle of the screen that they are still putting together. This one's from a little bit higher up. Remember, we've got to be above 10,000 feet. It's where the TFR ends. But you can see the launch site there, two towers, and the beach over on the right-hand side. A little bit more zoomed in here. But that look at that huge tank farm. All the propellants required to launch these things. Here's some information or some closer ups on the orbital pad B construction. I've heard different names for this. Oh, is it Pad West? Is it Pad B? Is it Pad 2? I think we're just going to start calling them uh, names of the Lord of the Ring Two Towers. We'll just all settle on that. <laughs> we'll go from there. You can see the excavations there on the left-hand side. That's the flame diverter. Looks like it might have two exits, one in either direction. Here's another angle on that. But they have been digging into the ground there. This is going to be super interesting exactly how this shapes up. But that big square looking OLM, that hole that they've been digging into the ground, and that takes us over to Massey's, the test site. You can actually see that oxbow abandoned sort of a loop moat around it and the test area in the middle. Still taking apart that CC8800-1, the huge monster crane. Of course, you have to be able to transport these cranes. They can't just clickety-clack down the road, so they have to be able to take them apart and almost containerize them or put them on flatbeds to move them around. Saw some chopstick testing as well. Some basic swings around and up and down. Just making sure it stays in uh, shape. Then back over to Massey's again, we saw a Ship 33 cryo test. You can tell because the atmosphere has frozen to the outside of the stainless steel ship. I know I say it a lot, it's just like a frosty mug. Like if you have a stainless steel tumbler or something like that, and the outside gets humid, wet during a nice humid day, and you've got your cold beverage inside. Same exact thing happens out there on a much grander <laughs> scale. I was going to say intergalactic scale, but we're not quite there yet. Just around the corner, that was ship 31 in the high bay there. You can just see right in the middle around the corner of the Star Factory. Here's a little bit of a zoom on it. Continuing to watch tile work. Not a lot going on right now in this specific shot from Jack, but you can see the scaffolding is still erected. And I know we talk about that uh, quite occasionally. I really do wonder whether they're going to have proper work platforms in there. That's why it's funny. NASA, right? Oh, they're so slow. They don't do anything so quickly. Well, NASA has these platforms that just fold down and fold back up again. So you roll a rocket like SLS in, and then all the work platforms fold down, and then they fold back up out of the way, and you don't have to construct the scaffolding every single time. In terms of rapid cadence, I do really believe that at some point we'll see that there in the high bays. Uh, just things that are a little bit more fast. You don't have to worry about the scaffolding being constructed from scratch every single time. Are we grouting these tiles? Looks like we're putting some filler in between the tiles. Clearly not grout. It's, it's space grout. It's you would have to call it. You can't just go to Home Depot and get, not sponsored by Home Depot, by the way, uh, get any sort of regular grout. You have to get space grout. I actually am pretty sure. Look, I just made all that up, okay? I don't know anything about space grout. Here's a shot from the office building, the little connector there. And we've got Ship 33 leaving the cryo station. Again, this is back over at Massey's. I really wonder, like, the more you watch these videos, do you start to look at these things and say, oh, yeah, that's Massey's. Hey, where's this? 
right? Don't read the don't read the uh, the orange text. This is the second tower, right? And this is the entrance right across from the second tower that we've been watching here for quite some time. I really do wonder, like people who have never even been there, do you start to get a feel of where these different shots are? Because you see them over and over and over again, right? A lot of time lapsey work here, as they were uh, putting some dirt and plates in. So those trucks can go in and out of there without destroying everything. You have so many heavy trucks coming in and out, you don't want to make a mud pool or anything. Completely destroy where you're trying to drive. But anyways, here's the, another corner, the third orbital launch mount corner installed over at the assembly area, the Sanchez site. You know, I, I am curious, how do people actually watch these videos? Like, do you watch these in the morning? This is going to be a rollout. We should have some time to talk. Uh, ship 33 coming back from Massey's. Like, do you do you get up in the morning and you watch these? Do you watch them in the evening? Are you, like, sitting with your feet up, drinking a coffee? Do you put it on the TV downstairs while you cook dinner? I've, I've never asked. Like, tell us down in the comments exactly how you engage with these videos. What a dumb way to say it. How you actually watch these things, where you get caught up on what's been happening at Starbase. What a cool shot. Because it looks like the future. Like, I appreciate that, oh, a big rocket ship on the launch pad. Oh, look, it looks like the future, right? The future should look by, like the future. The rocket ship rolling down the road with all the lighting, like the under lighting on the SPMTs, that looks like the future to me. I don't know why that that's more, like, real and visceral to me than, uh, oh, it's another rocket launch pad, great. Anyways... I'm curious, like, are you, are you sitting down with a, a beverage of some sort? Are you out on your patio? Is it night? Is it day? Exactly how people come across these videos. Look, it's, that looks like the freaking future. I don't, that's, I'm all over the map. But this is how I watch the videos. I just sit out and watch the videos and talk about it. I don't make a script. Oh, and now you can see ship 30 whatever rolling back to the, like, come on, that'd be boring. To me, that would be boring, honestly. Let's just scooch on back in there. We got more work to do on you. A couple camera angle changes there. It's fine. It's always so tempting to change the angle, right? Oh, there's that uh, lifter. That was like the four-point lifter. I just, huh. I guess it is four points because there's the two bottom points and there's the two top points. There's like... The main attach points up at the top, you can sort of see a little pin that connects to the ship, and there, there's another point at the bottom. Anyways, garage door is mostly closed here, but you can see Ship 33 being lifted off of the simulator, the test stand that it was on, rolled back and forth to Massey's. Then it's probably going to end up, well, I, I don't know that I should guess this because you can't see it, but there in the background. Painted. Ah, it's still Salon Day. Over here for Starhopper, I think I'll use this as one of the thumbs because the Starhopper thumbs, like Starhopper looks like the, not future, but immediate past. I don't know. Some, like, explain to me exactly what Starhopper looks like, but uh, Starhopper continuing to get gussied up. I don't know if we should use that. Well, Y'all know what that means. I don't know. Dressed up. Look, you can actually see it. <laughs> like how satisfying. Less satisfying that we didn't get to see the, set, the end of the uh, painting process there. Bunch of containers rolling around. Those got some doors and stuff on the side. That almost looks like a container office, but is that is that going no that would have gone between the two. I don't think it went into one of the bays. Anyways, folks, as always, thank you so much for hanging out with us here as we get caught up on what happens at Starbase. We do these twice a week. Make sure you turn on the notifications if you want to catch up with me as I try to figure out what's going on. I'm John Galloway. Massive thanks to the crew out there, Jack and Mary and the SBL Ops, and uh, also Marcus House this week. Marcus House and uh, his friend Sean, who are out there shooting, sending us a couple things that we could use in the video. But for now, we will catch you later, and we'll see you next time.